Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Angie and it's nice to have you guys here. Today, again, it's a different position because I'm going to very soon flip the camera around. I thought I would finally do a what's on my iPhone. I'm obsessed with hearing what other apps people use on their phones and getting kind of good tips on which apps I should be checking out. I just saw Tams and Lena do this on her channel and so that made me think, okay, I should probably get around to doing it. I'm afraid it's going to be very low tech because I don't, I don't know how they do it where you can see me but also see like the screen. I, yeah, so I'm just going to flip the camera around on my little mini tripod and just show you on the phone itself. So I have an iPhone 6. My case is from Ted Baker. It's just a portfolio case, so it flips open. I like it because it's got a little mirror here, so I can check my lip gloss throughout the day and just make sure that everything still looks okay. Yeah, it's just the regular 6. It's not the Plus. It's not the 6S. The Plus is just too big for me. Going from my 4S up to the 6 was enough of a jump in size, and I've managed to adjust to the size of the 6. But yeah, I, I've seen the Plus. I've held the Plus. It just, just... They're too big. They're too big for me. I get the appeal, but... Yeah, they're just too big for me. So I think I'll stick with the regular iPhone size. I don't have a million apps, but uh, because I have deleted uh, quite a few over the years, but the apps that I have are ones that I do tend to use fairly frequently or are really good for the occasional time that I use them. So let's flip the camera around and get right into it. Okay, so my wallpaper for the lock screen and the home screen is a picture that I took in the flat that I lived in in Oxford a few summers ago. This was the view from the desk in front of the window, so it always makes me happy when I see that. I've got a few pages. All the way over here are apps that I don't use hardly at all, but I do like to keep on. So I've got some that are Christmas related, some games, and NORAD track Santa. So during Christmas time, I move this over to the front screen, and then some French language apps and stuff like that. So if I'm stuck somewhere and really bored, I can play with those. On this screen are the apps that I keep around but don't use quite as frequently. Um, it also tends to be where new apps stay, so Think Dirty is an app where you can scan items and kind of see how they rate in terms of how clean the ingredients are. I'm still playing with this app and deciding if I'm going to keep it because everything that I've tried scanning so far comes up as not being in the system. So that kind of <laughs> defeats the purpose for me, <laughs> I think. If more people use it, it will get better, but right now it's just not that helpful for me. Color Story is a new photo app that I've been using and playing around with. I'm still not sure if I like it more than Snapseed, which I'll show you in a minute, but yeah, I'm still playing on with that. I keep Maps over here because I don't use it frequently enough to put it on the main screen, but I keep it out of a folder so that I just have to swipe to this screen and it's right there. And then the other folders are just, I've got my Apple and kind of also tech stuff. So iTunes, the App Store, the Apple Store, and then some of the apps that come with installed on the phone. So like the Watch, the Find iPhone, Find Friends, Home, and then Duo Mobile is just something that my university is now making all of us use to authenticate our accounts when we log in. So I've just kind of shoved it in there for now. Then I've got my extras. So this is where the compass tips, voice memos, contacts, calculator, flashlight. I've got a magnifying glass, magnifying light, and then stocks. So just things that I keep around. But like if I'm using the calculator, I usually do that from swiping up and it's right there. And then this folder is Office, so this is where I've got Keynote numbers, pages, Google Drives, Google Docs, Google Slides, and Adobe Acrobat. Again, these are usually things that will pop up if I'm in an email, so I'm not usually going to here and accessing them. I'm usually just clicking on a document in an email and it's opening, so I, that's why they're over here and not on the main one. Then I've got research tools, so I've got dictionary, I've got a scanner, so with this app it's pretty 
cool. It's also old. I can use the picture options to scan something and then I can convert it to a PDF. I can also put multiple pages so I can take picture snapshots of a bunch of pages in a document, put them all into one document, and then convert it to a PDF and email it that way. So that's just really handy. Google Translate is helpful from time to time. Wikipedia, Quick Voice, um, the app from a university, iTunes University, Google Earth, and Audio Note. I like Audio Note as a note-taking device, but I tend to use it more on my iPad. This one is nice because it's also got a notepad feature embedded in it. So when you click record and it starts recording, you can also be typing notes. And as you type the notes, it will timestamp the part of the recording that the note is connected to. So if you're, so I, this helps me just take really minimal notes, like keywords and stuff while I'm listening to a lecture, and then I'll see the timestamp and know, okay, at this point they were talking about this subject, and I can go straight to that part of the audio file, which is really handy for interviews, recording lectures, things like that. So I really like that note-taking audio app. Then I've got my e-readers and my news sites, so BBC News, Apple News, I've got the Guardian app, I don't use that as much. I tend to use the Apple News that comes on your iPhone. I've also got a Nook app, I've got Google Play Books, Blue Fire Reader, iBooks, and Kindle. I tend to use Kindle the most, but I've got all of these different ones on both my iPhone and my iPad so that some books when I was in grad, well, I'm still in grad school, but when I was still doing my coursework in grad school, there were some books that might only be available in one or the other. And so the reason I loved having an iPad as opposed to just a Kindle was I could get books in Nook from Barnes & Noble, I could get them in iBooks or Google Books or Kindle and have them all on one device. Got video, so I think this is Apple TV. I'm not sure. I don't use it. I should probably delete it, but uh, I've got the Bravo app and Netflix. I rarely watch that, any of that on my phone, but I do like having the Netflix app because if I'm out and someone recommends something, I can log on on my phone and add something to my list and not forget to do that when I get home. Then we've got um, financial, so that's just my banks, and then some other like receipt apps that I never use. Then we've got creating, so I've got iMovie, which I rarely ever use on my iPhone, but it's nice to have just in case. GarageBand, same thing, it just came pre-installed, I've never deleted it. VidLab and Lumiere are newer ones that I've used. VidLab I'm not a huge fan of, but Lumiere is kind of fun. This is how I create some really basic cinemagraphs. Let me see if I've got some that I can just show you. Looks like it's only got a couple. Um, but so it's a still picture, but you can put some moving effects. So I've got like some little sparkles on the Christmas tree. So that's kind of fun. Then we've got dining. I've got my Yelp. I've got Starbucks and Chipotle. I rarely use those, but it's nice to have. I do use Yelp quite a bit though. Shopping, I've got my Amazon app, Michael's, which has some good coupons. Uh, Joann's, Target, Cartwheel, that sort of thing, and then some QR readers. Then games. My favorite games are probably 2048, which I have beaten. I've gotten to the 2048 tile, but you can keep going. I also have a word search game, which is fun. Mahjong, which I enjoy. I'm obsessed with Frozen Freefall. <laughs> It's just fun and cute, and it's a really good puzzle game. And then we've got fashion, so I've got Vogue Runway, Polyvore, DSW, Sephora, Ulta, Depop, and ASOS. The Sephora app is a bit dangerous because it's made it way too easy to purchase things, and the DSW shoe app has gotten a lot better, and you can now make purchases through the app, and so I think that's going to be just as dangerous as Sephora. And then I've got movies and entertainment, so Flickster, IMDb, Harkins, which is a local regional movie theater chain. I think they're more than Arizona. They're, Ariz they're an Arizona company, um, but I tend to go to Harkins, so that's what I use to look up the movies. And then I've also got the National Theater app, which is just fun to look through. Then we've got... London, so this is my travel. Um, as we get closer to the trip, this folder will get moved over to the front page, but this just has all the apps that I use for when I travel for packing, my British Airway app, the Sky uh, Wi-Fi Finder. I've got 
the Addison Lee app, if I need to uh, get a cab through them. Yeah, and then Style Stylebook and Packing Pro I use for packing a lot. The currency sit, the currency converter is really great, and then City Mapper is genius for getting around. And then I've always got a two map, and I like the two map app because it works even if I'm not connected. So I don't need Wi-Fi or data service to be able to get the two map. Yeah, and with the Sky Wi-Fi Finder, it also automatically connects me to any of the cloud Wi-Fi when I'm in London, which is great. And then I've got the UK Dining folder so this it has a few restaurants that I really love I tend to use Pizza Express and Coat the most Coat Brasserie sometimes Giraffe I like it because I can make reservations in the app so these two folders get switched over to this page when I'm actually getting close to a trip and I'm accessing them on a regular basis. If you would like to know more about the apps that I use strictly for travel purposes, let me know and I can do a separate video on those. And then the front page is the ones that I use the most. So we've got the main settings for the iPhone, calendar for the iPhone, my week. So far I've got nothing planned for tomorrow. Yay! Even though I use my bullet journal, I do still put dates and appointments in my phone because I can set reminders alerts for that. The clock, which also has all my alarms, and then weather. Let's check the weather. It wasn't that hot today. Yeah, it was only 98 today. And who? it's going to be only 91 tomorrow. Yay. But oh, holy crap. That's the first time I've seen over 110. Uh, yeah, it's summer. Then we've got health. So I've got the Apple Health. I've got the Fitbit app for when I use that. I've got the Coach Me app, which I don't use as much, but it is kind of helpful. Um, I've got my Fitness Pal, even though I do not use that anymore. Um, I've got Super Better, which is a really fun app if you're struggling with anxiety, depression, weight loss, whatever. It's a really fun, it kind of turns fighting that into a game. And then I've got the Meditation Studio app, which is really good. It's It costs a few dollars, but it's got some really amazing guided meditations that you can use. Then I've got all my photo stuff. I've On this page are the ones I use a little less frequently. These are the ones that I use a lot. Snapseed is the main one that I use to edit my photos. If you would like a video on how I edit my photos for Instagram, let me know. But Snapseed is definitely my favorite. I've got all my different audio stuff, so podcasts, Shazam, Pandora, Spotify, which I use less frequently, Relax Melodies, and then Relax Melodies Seasons. I use those a lot at night when I'm going to sleep. I don't listen to a ton of podcasts, but I do listen to a few, and by the time this video goes up, there will be a blog post with my top three favorite podcasts, so the link will be down below in the description box, and you can go check that out. I've got um, my productivity, which is kind of a mix of stuff. It's not all productivity related. I've got Dream Days, which is a countdown app, so it's counting down to my trip. I've got Notes. Tide is the main Pomodoro app that I use, but I do have another one. Reminders, Wonderlist, which is all my shopping lists, and then Walgreens. I kind of need to reshuffle some of these. Simple is what I use to track my symptoms, so my symptoms for fibromyalgia, anxiety, depression, all of that. I also did a blog post reviewing that, so you can go check out my blog for more information on that app. Then we've got my blog slash YouTube folder, so I've got blog Loving the YouTube app, the YouTube Studio app, Blogger, which they need to update their app because the app is not good. I've got OneDrive, Google Keep, which I use to keep a lot of like YouTube and blog ideas, my Olympus Share app which just lets me connect my phone to my Olympus Pen camera and import photos and videos, which is really helpful, especially for Instagram, and then the iCloud Drive is in there as well. Then we've got general mail communication, so Gmail, Apple Mail, FaceTime, Skype, WeChat, which I only use for my friend in China, and Messenger, and then social is all the social media stuff, as well as my One Second Every Day app, and then WhatsApp I use constantly. So I, I would have it down here if this could fit uh, five across, but it doesn't, so I leave that out. And then also the eye hydrate, which I'm trying to use more frequently so that I can be better about how much water I'm drinking. I do like the eye hydrate app because it not only lets you track water, but it also le lets you track other things. So 
for example, I've had some water today. I've had probably about 27 ounces, if not a little bit more, but like I'm also drinking at the moment a bottle of elderflower presse, so we'll call that juice, and we'll say there's, there is roughly eight ounces. And then when I add that, it gives you a different color. Um, I also had a latte, so coffee, we'll say 16 ounces, even though it was mostly milk. So I can, it'll keep track. So this also is really handy because I wanna make sure that it's more blue than anything else. And then in the bottom, I've got phone, safari, music, and messages, because those are the other four that I use the most. I'd say the apps that I'm accessing the most throughout the day are the ones that aren't in folders. Other than settings, I just like having settings out just in case. So that is my iPhone. I hope you enjoyed that. I, like I said, I love seeing what people have on their phones. A lot of these apps are also available in whatever the Android or, or Windows store is. So you can get them even if you don't have an iPhone. A lot of the apps are available on other mobile platforms. So definitely check them out. Like I said, let me know if you want a more specific video on the photo editing apps that I use or on the travel apps that I use. I've kind of geared mine specifically towards London, but most of them would work for just about any major city or any traveling you could do. So I will probably do one closer to my trip, but I can do that sooner if that would be more helpful for some of you. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're not subscribed. All right, I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.